Significant figures. So when we talk about significant figures, those refer to all of the figures generated from a measurement. Now this is very important. In any type of experimental discipline, physics being one of them, when you do experiments, you're going to be measuring things. And when you measure things, you're going to be measuring them with specific types of instruments. However, whatever instrument you use is going to have a limitation to the quality of the measurement that it is going to generate. And as a result, the measurement values that we get will have a limited number of digits produced by those instruments. And those digits that are generated by the measurement are what we consider to be significant. There are other digits that we um, generate when we convert from one unit to another, but those are called placeholders. And we're going to elaborate on all those things. So again, this means that all the digits one gets from a reading, these are considered to be significant. So all the digits that you get from a specific reading. In general, all non-zero digits are considered to be significant and most zeros, now most, not all, are considered to be just placeholders, which aren't actually part of the measurement, but are necessary to represent the number correctly. Like for example, when you have to convert from meters to centimeters, one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Those two zeros are just placeholders to get the conversion right. And those placeholders are not significant. But sometimes zeros are significant. Our job here today is explain when zeros matter and when they do not. So before we get into any of that, uh, what we have to talk about is how things are measured in the first place. So we're going to do measurement technique. We're going to talk about measurement technique and how they're related to significant figures. So the number of sig figs um, generated or significant figures generated from measurement is entirely based on the relative precision of the tool compared to the object being measured. All right, so that's all specifically. It depends on what you're kind of trying to measure, the size of it, the order of magnitude, and the quality of the instrument that you're using to do this. So now let's consider this ruler that I have on the screen right here. Now this ruler, as you can see here, um, is actually a fairly low resolution instrument because it only has markings on it for every single centimeter. Now, that being said, that makes it kind of hard to get a really precise reading on what the length of this red line is. So let's take a look. Now, based on the instrument itself, if we were just to go with the minimum quality of the instrument, this instrument only gives us a six or a seven, but this is falling somewhere in between them. Now you can tell that it's bigger than six, and you can tell that it's smaller than seven, but you can also tell that it's closer to seven than it is to six. So writing down a six or a seven is actually a terrible estimate. So six centimeters, that's awful. Seven centimeters, that's less awful, but um, still, it clearly isn't one of those two values. So the entire scientific community has come to an agreement on an accepted practice for improving a measurement um, of every instrument. And this big idea here is to make a so-called a guess. All right, so when we wanna make a guess, what we are basically looking at is we're gonna take this space here and we're gonna subdivide it into tenths. And that is the agreed upon resolution of the guess that you're allowed to make. So when you take a look at this, that means you can only guess to a tenth of the smallest scale. So the smallest scale in this instrument is a centimeter. So a tenth of a centimeter would be technically a millimeter. So our guess has to be between 6.1, 6.2, 6.3, 6.4, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to uh, 7.0. But it's gotta be one of those decimals. So when we take a look down here, we have to choose from this list here. And you can't do any better than that. You can't get any more decimal places. You are only limited to the closest tenth. So based on our observations, really the contenders for the, our guess are these three right here, right? Um, you Clearly it's very obvious that it's not going to be any of these. You know that it's past 6.5. You can see that. You can see that it's past the halfway point. But what is not immediately obvious is if it is closer to 6.6, 6.7, or 6.8. It all is dependent on the quality of your eyesight 
and you're you have to make a guess. Now, I think we can fairly um, reasonably exclude 6.9 because we know that that would be cl- much closer to 7. So you've got these three choices. So which is correct, 6.6, 6.7, or 6.8? Well, the answer is yes. <laughs> By that, I mean any of these three are a reasonable guess. To my eye, at this resolution, to my eye, 6.7 seems to be the closest. Seems to be the closest. So that's um, the best that we can do. So if we are going to um, record this number, we're going to record this number, we're going to record it as 6.7. Now, you may disagree. You may think that it was closer to 6.8, or you may have thought that it was closer to 6.6. Again, this is using your best judgment. So in both cases, 6.6, 6.7, or 6.8 are still better than 6 or 7. So no matter what we do, a guess is better than not guessing. So let's take a look at what these numbers mean here. So we're just going to zoom in here. All right. So now what we have from our measurement is we generated two digits. We did, uh, generated this value six and the seven. Now the value six here, we were very, very, very confident. We knew for, we know for sure that that six is part of the measurement. Absolutely 100% certain. The seven, however, it's up for debate. We don't know if it's seven. And in fact, it's very unlikely that it's exactly on seven, but it was actually hard to tell. It could have been closer to 6.6. It could have been closer to 6.8. So this seven is really not that reliable. So we call this digit here, our guess, the least reliable digit, because we are not confident at all that it's seven, right? That's just our best guess. So this is a value in our measurement that has error. And that is what we accept. We accept only one digit in the entire measurement to have some error in it. And that is our guess. The one next door, that one is perfect. That one, we know everything about it. Now, the interesting thing about this digit, this also gives us some other information. And this, this actually, the location of this digit tells us what the precision of the measure of the, the instrument, I should say, is because our guess is to a tenth. So whatever this column is called, in this case is centimeters, um, this one should be the uh, smallest scale. And if we look back up at the ruler, it is because the ruler was in centimeters. And that's where that uh, second last digit of our, of our um, measurement tells us um, what the scale was on the instrument that we used to measure it. So you can actually, from the measurement itself, you can actually determine what type of instrument was used if it was done properly, because the last significant figure is always our guess. So this question, this uh, measurement, I should say, since two digits were created from it, that means we have two significant figures or two sig figs. And that is all that is generated from this measurement. So those two digits came from the actual measurement. They are considered to be significant. So now, um, why is that important? Well, let's take a look. Because if I convert 6.7 centimeters to meters, that will be 0.067. Now, here's the thing. These two zeros here were never part of the original measurement. So these zeros are not considered to be significant. They are just placeholders. R6 is um, our first significant figure, and we we agree that that value is perfectly known. And then the seven, and see here, we know that the seven is our guess. So the seven is our least reliable digit. Six is very reliable, that's why it's in green. And our placeholders I've highlighted in blue. These are not part of the measurement. I should probably put a unit meters. Okay. So big idea there. All right. So now let's talk about what happens when we actually improve the instrument. So now we're taking the exact same line that we did before, but this time what we're going to do is we're going to actually improve the ruler a bit. So this ruler now has millimeter mark. So since this ruler has millimeter markings, we have improved the precision of the instrument. The precision of the instrument before was to the centimeter. Now the precision of the instrument is to the millimeter. So we have increased the quality of our measurement by a factor of 10. So now the next thing is we have to make a guess again. So the issue is what is that guess going to be? Well, I'm going to zoom in a little bit further and we don't often have the luxury (laughs) of being able to do this in real life. Um, because again, we are limited by the quality of our eyesight. So here, as you can see, it's pretty pixelated. So 
we're really, really not going to be able to get a very, very um, good guess inside here because it's very hard to tell. So you're going to do the best that you can, but still it's better than nothing. So now when we look at this number, um, we then we're going to get some better quality and a couple more significant figures. So let's take a look at the first number. The first number in our measurement is going to be the six. And we are 100% confident with that six. Now it's going to be six point. Now let's take a look. So that's 6.12345 and well, 6.6. .6. Now if you look at, at this number, this line, it's actually closer to 6.6 .6 than it was to 6.7. So technically my guess of 6.7 before was really not as accurate as it had, I guessed 6.6. .6. So you can really see that it's difficult to get a very, very good guess, um, to be very confident with your guess. And that's why it is a guess. So now, speaking of which, time to add a guess. So you have to break this up into tenths. It's very hard to tell. So to my eye, it looks just slightly less than half, maybe a third of the way. So I'm going to guess that that is 6.63. I am not at all confident not at all confident with that value of three. So 6.63 maybe, and the units are centimeters. So that's the best that we can do under the given circumstance. So now let's take a look what we got going on here. So now what we've done is we've got the, um, so here are our values. So we got 6.63. So six, that is a significant figure. This six here is also significant. We are absolutely certain about this six and this six, this three, we are not so certain. Now, again, I want to talk about the location of these points. So here we can tell something about the measurement. So this location right here, where this digit lives, where this six lives, this indicates the smallest scale on the instrument. And where this three resides, that indicates the precision of the measurement itself. So when we take a look, if this column here is centimeters, this column here must be millimeters. So that indicates with the second last thing here that the precision of the instrument is to the millimeter. Now, our guess, that is a tenth of a millimeter. And we don't have a special name for that. We just call it tenth of a millimeter. So this measurement is 10 times more precise than the previous one. So again, the number of sig figs that we generate from a measurement is actually an indication of the quality of the instrument. So the more appropriate the instrument we're using, the more digits, legit digits, are uh, generated from that. Now let's run this experiment again, but this time we're gonna use an extremely low quality instrument. So let's take a look at this instrument here. So here, the smallest scale is actually 10 centimeters, which if you recall from metric, 10 centimeters is the same as a decimeter. So this is actually, these are decimeters. So that's actually one decimeter. So now when we make this measurement here, we have to really make a guess. So we're, we're actually, the whole measurement itself is a guess. So we, in our eye, in our mind's eye, we have to break this up into tenths. So again, um, without prior knowledge, you have to look at this and you have to say, geez, is that closer to six or is that closer to seven? Well, I'm going to be honest and um, I am going to say based on my, 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 my judgment, I, I think that that is closer to seven, right? Um, and again, it's really hard to tell because you're really just kind of based on visual inspection. So this looks like know, seven centimeters. Now this measurement based on this, there's only one digit generated from it. So, and that digit, that seven is just the guess. This is the lowest quality measurement you could possibly have. The lowest quality measurement only produces one significant figure, and that's because it is a guess. So this this instrument that we're using for the job is trash. So, um, but it does make the point. So if your measurement only has one significant figure, it is very unreliable. It is um, very inaccurate, and it really is an indication that you need a better instrument uh, to use to measure your particular thing for this particular um, object. So the tool was not particularly appropriate. So again, so since the, um, the thing, uh, the, the scale of the instrument was every 10 centimeters, a 10th of 10 centimeters is one centimeter. So this is technically, as I said, a decimeter. So a 10th of a decimeter is actually a centimeter. So here we go. Now, when you look at this, the only digit 
that we generated in this was that seven. That's the only digit that's there. So that is our guess. Now, the thing is, um, the precision of the instrument, we can still read from this. Even though there's only one digit, this column over here, this column still exists. So um, if this is the centimeters column, this column over here is tens of centimeters, or this column here is called the decimeter. So we know that the smallest scale on the instrument was decimeter. And again, we can read that from the measurement itself. You don't even need the tool. You just need to know that the measurement was done properly with an appropriate guess.